In Creole Parametric, you can create additive manufacturing lattice structures that are based off of formulas. And you have three different formulas. In order to show those to you, I'm going to create three separate bodies. In Creole Parametric 7.0, multi-body modeling was introduced, and I find bodies to be the easiest way to define the volumes for different lattices. So here I have a body. It is just a rectangle or basically a cube. Let's take it, copy, and then paste special. And for my motion reference, let me turn on my datum plane display. Let's use the datum plane called right. I'm going to drag it out here, a small distance. Let's use a value of 15. That's good. I'm going to go to the options tab to check copy original geometry. When I hit the check mark, you'll notice that I end up with a separate body in the model tree. Let's repeat that process. Select the body, copy, paste special, select the translation reference, drag it out to a value, and go to the options tab, check copy original geometry, and then hit the check mark. Now I have three different bodies. Let's turn off our datum plane display. To create a lattice, you go to the engineering overflow menu. Here is the lattice command. From the lattice type dropdown list, I'm going to change from beams to formula driven. And for the lattice region, here in 7.0, we now have the ability to replace a body with the lattice. And I'm going to select body three over here just because the preview is going to end up at the origin of the model. And I don't want to end up having the preview blocked by lattices in a moment. For the formula, let's go to the cell type. And there are three different choices, gyroid, primitive, and diamond. To see the differences between these, let's jump over to PTC MathCAD real quick. So once again, you have three different formulas that are available. Here is the formula for primitive, which is basically the sum of the cosines of x, y, and z summing to zero. Here you can see what the shape looks like. With the gyroid shape, it's combinations of sine times cosine for x and y, y and z, z and x. And you can see that we have a much more complicated formula for the diamond shape, which involves sine of all x, y, and z plus sine times cosine times cosine and cosine times sine times that. You can see the formula that you have here. It results in the geometry that you see down at the bottom of the screen. So let's head back over to Creo Parametric and build these structures in our part. For the first one, I'm going to change from gyroid to primitive. You can see a preview of what that looks like. Let's go to the cell fill tab. I'm going to make the thickness lower so we can see more of the shape. And then for the cell type, we have some default values of six here. I wanna make the cells a little bit smaller. Let's change these to a value of four on all the different sides. And then I can hit the check mark. Actually, before I hit the check mark, I'm gonna to go to this drop down list where you can select the accuracy of the lattice. And this is where you trade off performance of your computer versus the graphics. I'm going to change it to high, just make it a little better. Let's hit the check mark out of here. It did some computations and there you can see what the primitive shape looks like. These are parametric, so you can always edit definition if you want to change the different values. Let me change the sizes. Let's use value of 2.5 in all the directions. And since these are dimensions, you can use these in behavioral modeling. Lots of different choices for the parametric lattices and how you want to optimize your models. So there again, you can see the primitive shape that we have. Let's create a, another lattice. Once again, I'll go to engineering lattice. Let's change the type from beams to formula driven. Let's change the shape from gyroid to primitive for the lattice region. Once again, I'm going to replace a body with the lattice. This time we will do body two. Actually, for this one, we want the diamond shape. 
Let's go to the cell fill tab. Let's make the thickness a little bit lower. Just help see the shape better. Let's change the values here. Let's try the same values of 2.5 for the cell size. And change the accuracy to high. You can see that a little preview got a little higher resolution in there. I like that. Okay, everything is fine. Let's hit the check mark. And there you can see what we have with the diamond shape. And let's create our third formula, engineering lattice. Change from beams to formula driven. Let's define the body that we are going to replace for the cell type. This time we will use the gyroid. Again, I like to use a little thinner value just so it's easier for you to see the shape that we're going to have. And let's go to values of 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5 for the dimensions in X, Y, and Z. Let's change to high once more. Hit the check mark. Creo Parametric is going to do some thinking. And there you can see our shape that we have for the gyroid. Let's take a look at the interior of the model. Let's create a quick cross section. I'll go to the view tab. I'll go to section. I'm going to guess Z direction. Yep, Z direction works. Let's go to the properties tab. I always like to change the names of my cross sections. And I think that is good for the shape. Let's hit the check mark. And there you can see the formula based shapes. Oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. Why do you want to use these formula based shapes? Well, first off, they are going to be strong for their weight. But one of the most important things is that these structures are self-supporting. You do not need to use additional supports when you are using these formula-based lattice shapes in your structures. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.